Podcast video. In this episode of our Young Innovator series, we'll speak with Aishwarya Mohan about all things legal, a legal media platform Aishwarya founded, uh, which is dedicated to supporting aspiring commercial solicitors. Aishwarya is a student at the University of Southampton and a, cam a campus ambassador at Herbert Smith uh, Freehills and a blog writer for the, for the Business Update. So thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, so just to give our uh, viewers a background of who you are, could you just... Uh, to just delve into a little bit about yourself. I'm a penultimate year law student at the University of Southampton, so I'm going into my second year. I founded All Things Legal in my first year. I'm an aspiring lawyer with an interest in commercial law currently. I'm a proud Indian woman of colour. Some of my hobbies, um, I actually recently uh, directed a short film, filmmaking something that I'm interested in. I also produce music in my spare time and I think I'm a, I'm a social justice advocate, so I feel very passionately about that, and I think that's reflected through all things legal. Yeah, that's really interesting that you're interested in, you know, producing music and movies and films. So you seem like quite an artistic person, so why did you decide yeah. to enter into law? Um, actually, uh, I wanted to go into medicine. Uh, up until uni started, that's what I wanted to do. I had my offer for biomedical sciences uh, from Newcastle University, and I was going to finish my biomedical sciences degree, and then go into medicine. I realized that, you know, I am a creative person and I think that could be utilized. And um, I love public speaking and I felt like law fit me better. So um, I still want to do short film directing, filmmaking, music producing um, in my spare time. That's very much something that I'd like to uh, carry on forward even through my legal career. Law is something that I'm very much interested in uh, despite having a creative side as well. Yeah, I can definitely relate to, you know, you started off with medicine. I started off wanting to be an engineer growing up. I was, I was pretty good at maths. I wasn't very good at English. And then mm. for some reason, uh, during, you know, the later part of my school, uh, it flipped. I became yeah. you know, good at English and not very good at maths. Yeah, so I could definitely, um, I could definitely relate, to, to relate to that. And you founded All Things Legal. So just for anybody who doesn't know, could you just delve into what this is and why you founded it? Okay, so All Things Legal is a resource for... Aspiring commercial lawyers, but at the same time, anyone looking to develop their commercial awareness um, and keep up to date with, with news in the commercial sphere. So some of the things that we offer are weekly commercial news digests, um, in-depth articles on business, commercial law, and diversity within law. We also offer comprehensive skill development guides, you know, ranging from virtual uh, interviews to the Watson Glazer test, leveraging LinkedIn uh, and so on. We're currently on uh, LinkedIn, that's our main platform. We also have an Instagram, uh, but come 30th of uh, September, uh, I'm gonna be launching the All Things Legal website. So that'll offer a lot more than what we have now. So All Things Legal, first and foremost, is a diversity driven platform. So that's, that's how I kind of want All Things Legal to come across. Um, the aim in anything that I do has always been to help even in, in the slightest bit, just help make, I guess, the world a better place, even though that sounds cliche. <laughs> um, so, you know, with all things legal, I openly target social issues. Um, I speak openly in my personal life as well um, on gender equality, uh, equal opportunities for those of, um, you know, different socioeconomic backgrounds, LGBT rights, and a lot more. And so um, at the end of the day, if someone learns something new about themselves or has a different outlook, something more positive maybe um, on their career or their life as a result of interacting with me, All Things Legal or my team, then that's my job done. So that's pretty much what All Things Legal is. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good answer. Mm. Uh, you know, so you're a student, what, yeah. what, like, what makes you actually start something like this? Because a lot of people may have ideas, may have a vision for something they want to do. Mm. But what actually got that started at the beginning? So. I, so like I uh, said, I transitioned from medicine to law. So I had a bit of imposter syndrome. I still have imposter syndrome. And so with feeling like I'm not good enough to be a law student, full stop, um, that kind of made me feel a little bit insecure. That fueled with um, my passion to trade. I trade Forex and uh, sometimes I trade commodities like gold and oil. And so that requires me to stay up to date with the latest news 
And I found that so difficult because there are so many platforms, so much news. It's just hard to figure out what you need to know, what you don't need to know. I thought, okay, let me start something on LinkedIn, which forces me to um, produce something on commercial law every single week. So All Things Eagle actually started off as just a newsletter, a weekly newsletter that I do on uh, LinkedIn. So many positive comments came from it. So I thought, okay, maybe I can help even more people by turning this into maybe like a full rounded package. I just wanted to take a first step in changing the way that I feel about myself um, as a law student. I just wanted this imposter syndrome to just go away. So that's how All Things Eagle was born. So do you think in the past few years, law firms uh, have become actually better uh, with diversity and inclusion or have they just become more loud in terms of actually making noise about this? Um, I think a lot of them have actually made um, a lot of moves towards creating a more diverse and inclusive space. So, you know, Baker McKenzie has over 400 uh, female partners, which is brilliant. Robert Smith Freehills has a lot of networks for women. Uh, for the LGBT. So I think that's brilliant as well. But there are other firms that have set targets that maybe they, you know, they, they're struggling to reach at the moment. So overall, the corollary is that everyone's actually uh, trying to create a more inclusive space for people, which is good. Yeah, and I think it's great that you speak about social justice and how to create a sort of inclusive environment. Uh, and this is, this is quite a big, a, a big uh, question. So I appreciate, um, you know, the answer that may be given. But what, so what do you think law firms could be doing to um, promote diversity inclusion in a practical sense and actually get those results? Okay, so let's talk about what they're currently doing and then let's talk about what they can improve on. So uh, firms like Clifford Chance and Herbert Smith have incredible opportunities uh, in terms of their open days. So uh, Clifford Chance has the Accept Open Day, uh, which is brilliant. It's for LGBT individuals and uh, aspiring solicitors, uh, they have um, events for, uh, they have the Asian scholarship, they have the LGBT scholarship, they have the uh, black scholarship, they have a lot of scholarships. So I feel like a lot of law firms and organizations are giving more face-to-face -face opportunities for people of different backgrounds, which is brilliant. But I think what could also be done is, uh, their training intakes could actually be improved. Um, and when you think of diversity, I feel like people just see uh, gender um, and LGBT. What's less known is social mobility, which is huge, and also disability equality. I read in a recent report that I was reporting on um, that out of the trainees, or rather out of the whole cohort, cohort only 1.8% of the staff um, had a disability or ha had at least disclosed that they had a disability. And I think this number could be vastly improved. Um, so how law firms could improve would be to create more opportunities for those of uh, maybe mental disabilities or physical disabilities. And I think that's the way forward because there's a lot of opportunities for other um, areas, but not so much for these guys. Yeah, I think it's good that you mentioned the social mobility aspect, which may be yeah. often left out of the diversity, um, you know, conversation. Uh, and I've, sp I've spoken about this with somebody else I've interviewed for podcasts, but it'd be interesting to hear your views. Do you think work experience placement should be uh, focused more online uh, to give more opportunities for people from working class backgrounds to attend them? Or do you think that the in-person experience is just too valuable, um, you know, to miss out on? There are a lot of advantages for online work experiences. I myself have done so many um, from Inside Sharper, which is a great platform. There is an aspect of having physical work experiences uh, that I feel you can't quite get from online. However, I think both should be given equal weighting and equal opportunities. Uh, because like you said, there are some people who may not be able to access the physical ones, but can access online. So I think instead of online being a more supplementary to the physical, as in like, oh, you didn't get the physical, here's the second best option. I think both should be given equal weight by law firms. That way you can help the most people as possible.
Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And just to bring it back to you uh, personally, mm -hmm. so a law degree uh, or just any degree in general is quite a jam-packed, uh, quite a jam-packed venture for for anybody. You know, you got revision, you got essay deadlines, you got pending exams. <laughs> so overall, do you think your work with All Things Legal has actually helped you with your degree, perhaps by giving you uh, more opportunities to develop your writing capabilities, or has it hindered it? Uh, you know, acting as an extra time commitment, which you have to consider. For me, All Things Legal is my baby. So it could never be, um, you know, impeding on my time. On my time. Um, I, I will willingly give my time to All Things Legal. I'll give my lungs to All Things Legal. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I think it's, it, it's been a great opportunity for me to um, improve my legal writing, particularly, uh, and my vocabulary. It's also helped me in terms of uh, time management skills. Uh, so I branched out this uh, month to turning, evolving all things legal from an initiative just run by me to now a student driven initiative. Um, so I liaise and manage a huge team and it, this team continually grows because we're still looking for writers. Um, so we have a lot of editors, writers, senior execs. Right now, I'm enjoying the process. Yeah, one thing um, I think, you know, COVID has given a lot of people more time. So again, even with the law codex, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how we manage uh, to adapt when we have to eventually go back to university, to wow. jobs, etc. Just if anybody wants to find find you or find All Things Legal, where can they, where can they find you? Um, so, like I said about the website, uh, it's going to be coming out on the 30th of September at uh, allthingslegal.co.uk. You can find uh, me on Instagram at allthingslegalofficial and on LinkedIn, all th <clears throat> sorry, allthingslegal. Um, but these are three main platforms that we're using at the moment. So yeah, so Instagram, LinkedIn, and the website, which is gonna come up, uh, come in the next month. Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you.